<laughs> and I died. Okay, I've been killed multiple times by these guys. I'm not sure how they got out. Hey guys, Profe Pablo here, Spanish teacher turned Minecraft engineer. We are doing a series on XP farms. In this series, we have already looked at a charcoal farm, which is almost full. We have already harvested from a kelp farm, which worked really, really well. We've had a seed farm and a chicken farm, which has worked well as well. And lastly, we have my personal favorite, a zombie villager trading farm. These guys have been converted and they give you amazing deals, like one stick for one emerald, and it gives you tons of XP. Today we are going to be making a zombified piglin farm, or a zombie pigman farm, whatever you want to call them these days. Now, I just tried to make one of these using a trident killer, and uh, it got so out of control. You saw in the intro of this video, they destroyed me. So we're going to try a different method. The first thing I want you to do is lay down a double chest. Let's do that. Then out of the back of this double chest, we're going to place one, two hoppers, just like that, going into this double chest. Now, from this double chest, we're actually going to create kind of a flushing system so that when this is full, we can just flush it out. So we're gonna place a hopper like that there. And then underneath that hopper, we are going to dig down a few blocks um, so that we can get underneath it. And we're going to place a dropper facing down. Now we can fill this back in just a little bit. Um, leave a space so that you can throw down a lava bucket and burn anything that comes out of here. Now let's do a repeater clock on this by placing an observer here, facing out, and placing an observer facing in. Oh dear. Didn't know water was there. Now that's going to be making a constant clicking noise and you'll want to go ahead and cover this up so everything falls directly into the lava. If you want to create a different repeater clock that you can turn off and on easier, go for it. An easy way to do that is you place a sticky piston back here and a lever here so that it goes out, grabs that observer and pulls it back. Uh, and that way this stops, but when you push this again, it pushes it forward and it starts shooting everything out. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and cover up my handiwork here. And that basically creates a flushing system for this so that you can flush everything out. Now, uh, you'll want to also place a lever right here, which will turn this hopper off and on so that when you put stuff in this chest, it doesn't go down into the next system. Okay, now for the actual farm and not the collection system, we are going to go 20 blocks up. You'll definitely want to use scaffolding for this if you're building in survival. I died multiple times making mine. Once you have that, go ahead and build a back to this thing. And once you have that, build a front as well. Now you can break this front row of blocks so that there's a gap right here. And you can place stone slabs here and here. That way the um, little zombified piglins can't get out. Okay, up here at the top, place eight blocks going out. Place eight blocks on the other side. Go ahead and extend this out to the end as well. And this. Do the same thing on the other side. Then build up a wall here, extend it out one on both sides, have it come all the way this way to kind of build a wall for this trough. So you should have something that looks like this. Go ahead and place a bucket of water there, there, and there. Should extend out to this hole place one there, there, and there as well. Should do the same thing. 
Now we are actually going to break these blocks here so that we get zombified piglins that kind of fall into this area there as well. And we're gonna cover it up from this end so that they don't get out. As they come down this trough, they're gonna kind of collect here and push each other into the system. Just so that we don't have any water overflow, place buttons here and buttons here. And now we can start building our nether portal. Now, because we built this trough extra wide, it doesn't really matter what side our zombified piglins are coming out of. Go ahead and build this across like that. And then build 22 blocks up. Go ahead and finish off the portal. I know that's a ton of obsidian. Once this thing gets going though, it's really, really worth it. Okay, and now for the trickiest part of the build, which is to actually get this thing turning off and on. So come to one side of the build, build three blocks out, place an observer facing that way, another observer facing that way, creating a clock, place a dispenser there, and then a bucket of water so that the water turns everything off and on. I'm gonna go ahead and raise this trough up one more level. Except on this side, I need to do something over here first. Now this next part can be very tricky. Please follow these instructions exactly. Place a wood block here. It's gotta be planks. Over here to the side, place a stone block. Then under here, place one stone block, two stone blocks. Place an observer facing out and another one facing in. And on top of that observer, place five more observers. All those are gonna be facing down. Now take a trap door, come up here to the top. You want this trap door the same level as the top of this observer. So if you can get it just right, you can do it like that, or you can place a temporary block and then an actual block like that. Come down here, crouch, and place trap doors all the way down until they're right on top of this plank. Take some glass, place it beside this plank, and build a column all the way up. Build another column here, and then you're gonna have one more column, but you kinda have to do it in stages. So place a couple blocks, place your lava bucket, and actually, we're going to need to get a glass block underneath here. I know that's gonna kind of mess with our water flow a little bit. There we go. That should start turning our portal off and on, but we want it to go much faster than that. So grab a button, place a button there, build up a couple of glass blocks. So place lava right there, build up a couple blocks, place a button right above the lava, and then put more lava right there. That'll make this thing turn off and on pretty fast. Okay, go ahead and close this off just so that you don't fall into the lava. Okay, and this thing seems to be working great. They're all coming out on this side, falling in. I did realize that if they were coming in on this side, they would not be able to fall into the hole. So what you would have to do is break this down one more further and block this off on this end, like this. In fact, I'm gonna do that over here as well. Break it down one more further, block it off. I'm having trouble because there's so many of them. Okay, and as you can see, this thing is filling up so much to the point that some of them are coming out. So you want a way to turn this off and on easily from the ground. Here's what I suggest doing. Find the back of this, build out a couple blocks, place a temporary block here just to keep it from turning off and on, lay down a sticky piston with a block in front of it. You can go ahead and turn it back on if you want. Come back here, 
and under the sticky piston, build a column all the way down to the ground. Okay, from there, place a lever there, and then every other block you will want to break. All the way up to your sticky piston. Yikes, we have water coming out. Okay, because we had water coming out here, I'm actually going to have to, let's see, kind of adjust every other block I'm breaking. So, okay, so I would be breaking that. I don't want to do that, so I'm going to need to do this and have a block there. There, that should work. Now, take your redstone torches and place every other one going up Oops. right on top of the other. This is sending a redstone signal up to the top. Okay, and right here, we're gonna place one there, and there, and then when we flip our switch, it should make the whole thing stop by pushing a block inward, disrupting the signal. Perfect. Now you can come down here. I would suggest grabbing a sword. Um, you should be able to almost one-shot these guys because they drop so far, but just in case, Okay, I jumped over here to survival to see how much XP we get. We've only had this thing on in a couple minutes. Okay, there we go. I had like 14 XP in a matter of seconds. If I want more, I can flip this on again. Uh, the machine will start working. They'll start falling down in here. I would give them a minute to uh, kind of collect. But you can look in here, and this chest is starting to fill up. It's not full yet. But grab the stuff you want. You can even grab enchanted swords if you want. That one has looting. That's nice. Um, and everything else, you can actually put through the system and then flip this on and it will get consumed and burned up and not take up any more space. I hope you guys enjoyed this simple XP farm. Parts of it can be really tricky, but if you can handle it in survival, it really is worth it.